we're gonna talk about escaping HTML special characters. There are instances where, and we saw at the end of lesson two, where we would want to display certain things in certain ways. And for example, you may want to write an HTML element with its angle brackets and we want to see it that way with its angle brackets in our web browser. What happens if we want our data to look like this? For example, we were just doing some work on comments and we know that the browser would actually ignore your HTML comments. So how do we get our browser to print this HTML comment? open and close and tag and to print this left bracket and right bracket here and even down here how do we do these things we use something called html entity references a nice big fancy word but basically it means we are going to be using some sort of code that can replace the special character that would not normally be rendered by the web browser. We see here that I used some sort of code here to represent the left angle bracket or the less than sign and then I used another code to represent the right angle bracket or the greater than sign. So, these codes are what are called entity references. And what they do is that they allow you to use a special code to represent some HTML special character. And by using this code, the browser is able to display the special character that it normally wouldn't have been able to display. So, you all would see this and this and I want to let you guys know that there are actually a lot more, a whole lot more of these HTML entity references. So you don't need to memorize them. I will show you all a few common ones and I would leave a link where you could actually go and take a look at a lot of the other ones that currently exist. And there are other ways to escape HTML special characters, for example, using Unicode, right? So you see here where I'm hovering over this code, we could use Unicode, but we're not gonna get into Unicode right now. We are just gonna learn these HTML entity references. What is the format of this, what we call a HTML entity reference? And HTML entity references come in this format here. So the standard format of an entity reference is, and the brackets are used to separate the three parts of an HTML entity reference. So the first part is the ampersand, and for those who don't know, an ampersand is simply the name of, a, of the and sign. So this and sign here that I'm highlighting in green is called an ampersand. The ampersand is immediately followed by either a numeric code or a named code. In our case here, this is a named code. There are instances where there's an equivalent numeric code and again the, the links would contain links to pages that would show you the entity reference, the numeric code if it exists or the name code. There are entity references that have both a named code as well as a numeric code some have one or the other. They begin with an ampersand, immediately followed by a numeric or a named code, and they are terminated by a, by a semicolon. And that's the standard form for an entity reference. 
five common entity references are the reference for the less than bracket, the greater than bracket, non-breaking white space, the quotation sign, and the actual ampersand. So we can see them here in the web page. So we have the entity reference on the left hand side and its equivalent on the right hand side. Now, quick exercise. So again, you, know, you can pause it and think about what I'm about to ask you guys and give it some thought. We need to practice thinking about certain types of problems because after all, it's a programming course and programming is about solving problems. So I'm going to give you a simple exercise. You could pause, think about it, and I'll go into the answer soon. So we learned how we could use entity references to represent HTML special characters. How do we represent entity references if our web browser when they see an entity reference they replace it with a html special character so basically what i'm asking you is how did i get the web browser to display every entity reference that i have on the left side here think about it give it some thought because what i just taught you guys is that if the browser encounters this entity reference, it will replace it with a angle bracket, left, less than sign. This one will be right, greater than sign. So I would have had to use some method to get the browser to display the actual entity reference. So this is the actual code here. And the way we went about doing it is if we remember the format for every entity reference is ampersand numeric code or named code followed by a semicolon so simply if we know that the and sign is represented by this entity reference then to represent any other entity reference we simply need to replace the ampersand by its entity reference and then simply place the numeric code after followed by the semicolon and if we look in the html code this is what we see so remember i couldn't use a single ampersand here because the browser would simply display this so i had to use the actual entity reference substituted for an ampersand followed by the numeric or named code in these cases all are named followed by the name code followed by the semicolon and the same for each one entity reference named code semicolon entity reference named code semicolon so that's how we did we did it and congratulations to anyone who got it correct